Today we're exploring one of my favorite areas in Seattle. We'll talk about the best, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This area of town has beaches, delectable dining options, parks, trendy neighborhoods, and much more. It's a haven for those looking for a less busy lifestyle than downtown Seattle. I'm Adriano Torre, and today we'll go over everything you need to know about living in West Seattle. We'll be discussing five unique neighborhoods, and stay until the end, we'll share a surprising fact about which area had the most demand in recent years. This is a critical piece you need to know if you're on a hunt on a West Seattle property. Our first stop is Alki. If you can't live without the waterfront strolls or the early morning jogs while taking in the Puget Sound breeze, Alki Beach is the place for you. This is the perfect spot for your summer day. The boardwalk is also ideal for biking, scootering, or just taking a pleasant stroll. There are great places to grab quick bites as well, such as Dukes, El Chupacabra, and Natalie's on Alki. You'll also have stunning views of the Olympic Mountains and Bainbridge. Absolutely breathtaking. Not far from Alki Beach is Salty's, one of my favorite restaurants. Once you open the menu, you'll find the daily catch. Oysters, king and silver salmon, juicy king crab legs, and more. Here you'll have breathtaking views of the Seattle skyline. Scheduling reservations can get tricky, so make sure to make the arrangements well in advance. As far as living in the Alki area, you'll find a large variety of options. Near the waterfront, there are condos and apartments. The further inland you go, the more craftsmen and single-family properties there are. Let's check out one of the waterfront condos in Alki. This condo has two bedrooms, two baths, and 1,829 square feet of living space built in 1993. So the first thing that really popped as soon as I stepped inside the unit was the flooring, it's marble. It uh, has a strong satin in it, so it's, uh, the, the brightness is very uh, reflective of the lights that are coming from the recessed. The one thing that caught my attention was the bay window setup. Uh, you have this floor to wall, a window frame, there is no you know, accessibility on opening and closing other than the tail windows that we have on the two sides. So the one thing that stood out, you know, is the panoramic views. And, a, and on a day like this, you have the Olympic Mountains, a, a lot of outdoors going on right now, people on their bikes, uh, people jogging uh, right down to the beach. Uh, the other thing too that uh, I found very handy was the fact that you have a, a door to the balcony area. Uh, and this balcony also connects over to the primary room. And the con is just that you have these wall heaters and they are all you know, functioning through a thermostat that is gonna be on the opposite side of the wall. Downside to this is that this tends to break down like very often. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I haven't seen this last more than two years and it's a constant thing that you know, have to be either replacing it. The other thing too that I didn't find as convenient was the fact that you have a cooler that is built into the wall. I don't know how you feel about this, Barry. That wire definitely... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not... It does, it's totally off. I, it just doesn't really go there. Uh, and uh, though just having the core, you know, exposed, it doesn't, it's not very appealing, so to speak. And also it can be a trip hazard. I, I like the fact that they do have this alcove and, you know, recessed wall for decoration and setting up your TV. And so let's go ahead and head over this direction. I want to show you what we have here for a master or primary suite. And for the primary suite, we are going to be able to fit a king size bed, though it's gonna be a close call. And it's mainly because we just have so much space to set up uh, two nightstands on each side. And the king size bed is gonna come clear all the way to about seven feet, if it's a California, seven feet. So it's just gonna come very, very close and tight this condo is the perfect option for those looking for immediate accessibility to the beach. It's spacious, well-maintained, though on the downside, it's dated. Would you pay $1.4 million for this? Let me know in the comments below. Now we're traveling inland to North Admiral. This area is mostly residential. It has a business district that is highly busy both day and night. It features the Admiral Theater, Bebop Waffle Shop, pizzerias, the Safeway, 
vintage clothing stores, and much more. Centered in the middle of North Admiral is West Seattle High School. With a student-teacher ratio of 21 to 1, a highly rated high school, it's home to the Wildcats. The high school has a wide range of educational programs, and conveniently located next to the school is the Hiawatha Playfield. Here is where people from all walks of life come together. Another West Seattle notable mention is the Hamilton Viewpoint. You get incredible views of Seattle, Bainbridge Island, and you can even see the ferries crossing the Puget Sound. Every 4th of July, the locals gather here to enjoy watching the fireworks. As far as property types, you'll find options ranging from the early 1900s renovated craftsmen to contemporary single-family residences and modern townhouses. There are redevelopments going on in many different parts of the area. Let's check out a newly built craftsman in North Admiral. So, as I'm making my way to the kitchen, the first thing that popped my eyes was this Neolithic quartz waterfall island, splendor uh, at its best, with the contrast that it has with the natural light, along with the flat panel cabinets. Huge butler's pantry. Uh, we still have the Neolith quartz, plenty of shelving, uh, on the opposite side from the sink. This actually, yeah, it's very, has some very similar layout and also a very similar finish to what we toured in Mary Franklin uh, in Eastgate Bellevue. This entrance as well is beautifully decorated. You have the lamp lights, the joists, you know, that are matching the colors in contrast to the floor. And in the floor, we have this beautifully brushed white oak Planks. Look at this chandelier. Seems like we're getting into a castle here. So we're in the primary room. For comfort, we have the mini split that is right opposite to the bed. The white plank oak is throughout the entire house. You can tell immediately as you step into the property that nothing was left out. From the wainscoting to the exposed joists, rustic aesthetics, the brushed oaks, white planks flooring to the Neolithic quartz waterfall island, you couldn't go wrong with all the high-end finishes. Plus, this property comes with a perk, a turnkey ADU to immediately start generating cash flow. Now we're in the basement, and this basement has been permitted as an ADU, and the ADU has concrete flooring, and this flooring is finished and it makes a very smooth surface. Um, Barry, you can likely feel it as well, right? It might get a little bit slippery. It's very, very smooth for surface. Uh, we have a kitchenette area with an induction range. And here is one thing that really caught my eye, which is this sequoia brown marble. Uh, we don't get to see them as often, so definitely they did a very good job in conceptualizing the color on the marble with the overall contrast on the selection of the porcelain tile. There are two bedrooms here in the ADU and also a very spacious living area. And this one would go in the neighborhood of $2,200 a month, right? And so that's, that's a lot of money. I mean, and this property is a property in high demand when it comes to rentals in the North Admiral area. This new construction features five bedrooms, three baths, 3,651 square feet of living space, and it's on a 6,000 square feet lot. The asking is $2,195,000. With 20% down, this will make your principal interest taxes and insurance payment at $11,000. Such a nice day today, we just we just felt prompted to put the top down. Yeah, it's hot outside. It's hot outside, huh? Yeah, I think this is one of the first days in a long time where it was sunny out and we're filming. It's been a long time, yeah. It's been at least uh, a good uh, three months since we have this uh, great of a sunshine. One thing I noticed as my cameraman Barry and I were driving is that there are a lot of churches around here. On our outing, we spotted at least seven churches. For sure, we won't run out of Sunday morning services. Now we're headed down south to Westwood. It is a lot like North Admiral in a sense that it's mostly residential. It's home to Chief Self International High School with a student to teacher ratio of 18 to one. Right across the building is possibly the most impressive soccer and football fields I've seen in a school in Greater Seattle. Westwood also has a shopping center called the Westwood Village. 
you'll find a Safeway, a Target, a DMV, and much more. All perfectly located within walking distance of each other. We'll find two beds, two baths condos with 1,000 square feet of living space going for the low 320,000s, while a 1940s mid-century fully renovated bungalow cottage or craftsman, four beds, two and a half baths with over 3,000 square feet of living space, it starts in the one millions. Heading east is Fonleroy. This residential neighborhood features plenty of property options. It's home to the ferry terminal. Here you can hop on the ferry to Bastion Island and Southworth, just on the other side of the Puget Sound. It gets packed during rush hour and over the weekend, so make sure to check the ferry schedule and arrive early. Another attraction is Lincoln Park, located next to the ferry terminal. The park is expansive with its hiking trails, its countless picnic tables and barbecues, playgrounds, and even a beach where you have great views of Bastion Island and the Puget Sound. The forest itself is lush, the air is pure and crisp with the smell of pine. It's a perfect place to take a stroll, connect with nature, or even go for a swim. A mid-century brick bungalow single family with four beds, two baths, 2,100 square feet of living space will start in the high 900s, and the same properties closer to the water with unobstructed views will have a price tag in the high ones to the low two millions. Last but not least is Gatewood. This is another great option if you're looking for a place to live in West Seattle, yet want to remain separate from the hustle and bustle of North Admiral Nalkai. A two-bedroom, one-bath condo with 900 square feet of living space along California Avenue will start in the high 300s, while a mid-century craftsman with two beds, one and a half baths, will have an asking price in the high 700s. Now, here's one thing you need to keep in mind when hunting for your next property in West Seattle. When it comes to property demand, you'll see that homes in Alki and Beach Drive will be taking off the shelf at a faster pace than any of the other areas we've explored. In fact, the average days on the market for a single family home is three and seven for condos when the market is hot. And when it cools down in a moderate market, you'll still see the houses and condos sell on a 17 day turnaround versus other communities. Additional areas in West Seattle you should look into for your next purchase are Genesee, Seaview, and Alaska Junction, which price ranges and lifestyles mirror the communities we feature in this guide. That's all for today. Let me know if you see yourself living in West Seattle. If you wish to tour a property or need a confidential consultation with me, click the link in the description. And if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. If this is your first time to the channel and you would like to see more content like this, tap the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.